welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can see, the garage is empty. That means the camp light project and the uh, rear power unit is finally finished. So I want to apologize first of all for taking so long to get this video out, but this project was uh, a little bit bigger than I had anticipated. I already kind of knew it was going to be pretty involved, but it seemed like it just started getting worse and worse. I did film it. I did. I set everything up. I was filming all the sections. You can see, look, I'll put the little videos right up here. Maybe throw one over here. This is me. I'm working on it. I was filming it. But at some point I decided, you know what? Got to put the camera down and get into this thing because it was really a very involved process. And what I did, I put these in. These tiny little LED lights. I used 17. I got six on each side and then I put five in the tailgate and I'm using these as camp lights so this is it and you'll be surprised at how much light you can actually get out of these little things now the other thing I put the rear power unit in there but I did not put a secondary battery in I know a lot of people run that but these lights do not pull very much amperage so I'm not worried about being out and leaving these on even if I left them on overnight they're not enough to drain the battery down Worst case scenario, I have a tiny little jumper box that I always carry with me. But I've done the math and these things will be fine. Most of the time you're just going to set up your camp lights just while you're hanging out. And then when you go to bed, turn everything off. So I'm not worried about it. We're going to be good. But let me dive into how come this took so long and what I wound up doing. I tell you what, instead of doing the video here in this little garage, why don't we go out somewhere, find a nice place to set up camp. And uh, we'll go over what, what the project involved, what I did, what I used, how it looks. Because uh, it's way too nice outside to be sitting in here going over this. So I'll catch you out there on the road. So when you're out camping all by yourself and there's not really much lighting going on, um, what I wanted to do was have some kind of additional lighting on the sides of the Jeep and on the back that when I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I can flick these things on. They're a real low wattage, low amperage, low LED light. So it's not going to draw a lot of power off the battery. So I am still running just a single battery up front. And I can run it all night with no problems. Because like I said, it doesn't pull very much amperage off the battery. And with the battery that I've got, it should be perfectly fine for running for a couple hours. No problems. So what I did was I added three amber lights and three white lights. These are all inch and a half slip-in lights. I'll get you a close-up here in a minute of what they are. They put out a very good amount of light for what they are. These things are super tiny, but they really do put out a good amount of light. Um, all the stuff I did on this project I found on Amazon. I would put a link, but I don't have an Amazon account for it, so you're just going to have to search for it yourself. All I did was all these parts that I used, I went on Amazon, I searched for what I was interested in, I went with the one that had the highest, you know, like a five star. Uh, review on it plus the highest number of people that have purchased it so that way I know it's probably going to be something worth getting but I got these lights on this side I got the same exact thing going on, on the other side that way at night they're all on separate circuits so I can run the ambers and I can run the whites I can run them separate um, so I can kick on the white lights when I get out get set up and then if the bugs get to be too bad hopefully by using the amber lights that will deter any kind of bugs from coming out and bothering me while I'm out here. As for the back, on the lift gate, I put two over here on this side, and I went with three over here because the two whites are going to work good because when I have the table open, it puts the perfect amount of light right on the cook surface so I can see what's going on. It lights up the whole back of the Jeep just right. I'll throw a picture into that. I took a great picture of it at night when it was sitting out on the driveway. And like I said, I am super impressed with these lights and how much they put out. And everything is controlled right over here. I made this whole piece. It's just a regular old piece of plywood. And I covered it. I had a little bit of um, extra headliner material that I used, which worked out great. What I'm running on it is a six-panel... Uh, fuse box which is connected straight to the battery and then right over here on the sides I've just used three of the six circuits so far so I've got a digital readout for the battery so I can always see where the 
the battery's at. That's on its own circuit. And then right down here, I've got the five switch that'll run all my lights uh, in the fridge. So these back four are all, you know, one side's for the, uh, the white lights, the amber lights, and then I've got the white lights on the lift gate and then the amber lights on the lift gate. And what I did on this switch, this one here is set up on its own circuit that will turn on this down here. And what this is, let me get this out of the way. This is the outlet that'll run to charge the Jackery. And then this one under here is just a couple USBs. So when I kick that on, that'll turn all this on. And my, my thoughts on that is when I'm driving somewhere, I can flick that switch on and then have the Jackery charging while I'm driving. And then when I get to where I'm at, kick the switch off. And all I got to do then, I got my cables right here. These are from the solar panel. So just plug in the solar panel. Solar panel is working perfect. You can see I got 58 watts coming in. I'm only using one watt. The fridge just shut off. So that, uh, that dropped down. And the battery's at 99%. And it'll charge this thing right back up. And all I, you know, it is the downside to the Jackery on the 500. It doesn't have the dual imports, but it's all right. All I gotta do, unplug this, plug in the cord back in, flip my switch on, and it'll charge right back up using the Jeep. Like I said, my goal with that is because the charge rates are different. So like a day like today, it's in the full sun. I actually had it running on the solar while I was driving out and it's doing fine. But for whatever reason, I can run it off the battery from the Jeep and the alternator. It'll charge all that up. But when I'm definitely going to be off for a while, turn that off, click over to solar, extend out my panel, and I'm good to go. So this is where the project kind of went crazy on me. Um, when I was envisioning what I wanted, you know, it's, I knew it was going to be a difficult project. Um, I do have experience doing electronics, so I know what I was doing, but you know, the timing of doing everything, it really worked out good because with the tent not being here, it's one less thing I had to take off the roof of the Jeep, but the amount that went into it can be overwhelming to, you know, if you guys at home are trying to do this and you don't have too much of an idea on what you're planning on doing or how to do it. So what happened was you basically have to take everything out of the back of the Jeep. You know, the storage system had to come out, the back panels had to come out, the headliner had to come down again. Um, you gotta get the speaker, the soundbar speakers out of there, which is not very easy, but everything's gotta come out because you are chasing wires everywhere. And then I had to take this down because I wanted wires up in here. Um, it can really be over, like I said, it can be really overwhelming because you're just yanking things everywhere and then feeding wires through places. Take your time, solder all the connections, make sure they're good, use heat shrink on them. That way they're perfectly protected from any kind of weather. You know, if you're going to do something like this, just slow down, take your time, do it right. So for the routing of the wiring that I used, um, remember the main stuff comes in through the roof. I chased it over and then there's holes up here in the pillars that you can run the wires right down into and remember on your Cherokee there's that cubby hole right there now the cubby hole is still there for mine but behind here is where the wires kind of tucked in for now so I ran all that right down through here into that cubby wired in the panel I left plenty of space on the wiring to where if I need to I can remove the panel pull it out to you know where it's gonna be out here I can work on it or do whatever I gotta do if I gotta add more switches or something like that. And then for up above, let me show you how I did that. I just took the wires from down here, chased those back up, and then came across here. And you can see how the you know, typical Cherokee, the weather seals are bad, or this, whatever the seal is. Um, I chased the wires up and through here, and they go up, and there's a gap all the way around, right around where they were, and then up in here there's plenty of space up under here 
and I just tucked all the wiring up in there, wired these lights, wired the other side. I wrapped it up in the, uh, that same material that I use on the wire looms on the roof. I use that same stuff, wrapped all the wires up in there. Anywhere where it's rubbing on metal and metal, especially in the corners and then up under here, um, I just cut like a small section and then put it on there to protect the wiring. As for the wiring on the five panel toggle switch, um, that comes pre-wired, which really wasn't terrible. Like I said, on the one circuit, I pulled the one switch separate. So it's actually on its own circuit from the rest of the switches. Um, I wanted it that way because if charging the Jackery pulls too much amperage, it's gonna take out all the other stuff. So by putting it on its own circuit, I'm not worried about it. You know, if it, if it does blow the fuse, it's not going to shut off the lights and everything. It's on its its own dedicated. I do have some pictures I'll put up uh, showing you the back side of this panel and how kind of everything's wired in. Um, like I said, if you know any kind of electronics works or wiring, it's not terrible. It's pretty easy to do. But if you don't know, it can be a little difficult, and that's fine. So my future plans for the panel, because I still have three more circuits I can put in. Um, the one big one is going to be onboard air compressor. Uh, I'm still kind of trying to decide what I want to do. Do I want to run an ARB compressor or the Vier or just go a totally different route? But the good thing is I still got room on there for the circuits to run. The main wiring for the positive and negative, those are four gauge wires. So I have no doubt that it'll, it'll run those things no problem. Won't blow the fuses or nothing. Um, the good thing is behind this cabinet, I do still have space behind there. And that was my intentions was to put an air compressor behind that. So still got that option, still looking into it. Let me know what you guys are running out there. You guys run the ARB, the Vire, or whatever else are you guys running? Um, I'm curious to know. Uh, I want something that's going to fill the tires up, not super fast, but I don't want to be out here for an hour or two pumping air in the tires because that would suck. But, um, yeah, let me know what you guys are using. Drop a comment down below. If you guys have any questions on anything, however I ran something, what I used, or whatever you got, drop a comment. I'll be glad to answer them. Um, sure. Yeah, that's going to do it, though. So I appreciate you guys staying tuned and uh, checking out the video. And like I said, dropping comments. Let me know what you think. And yeah, that's going to do it. But for now, I'm going to hang out here. This is a pretty nice day. I'm gonna grab a cold drink. Soda. I don't drink beer, so I got soda in the fridge. I got uh, some cookies in there, too. I'm going to enjoy those and uh, just hang out. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. See ya.